Hello, welcome to Creative Expressions with Lisa Boone Designs. I am a DIY paint retailer in Madisonville, Kentucky. I also am a retailer for Iron Orchid Designs and Decoupage Papers by Recycled, um, Sweet Pick and Smoke Paint. I have a few different lines, but today we are going to be making over this vintage box using DIY paint. We're gonna be using liquid patina. We're gonna be using um, dark and decrepit for some details. And we're gonna be using a couple of different decoupage papers and also some molds. So I went ahead and I got these molds gathered together because I wanted them to get a crust um, so that I can paint over them. And so I went ahead and I prepped that. I'm also gonna be using two different Klingon brushes. This is the S30. It's my go-to brush. This is specifically for big top and liquid patina. And then I have another one just for paint. And this is a new to me brush. I didn't realize that they had come out with this. This is the FA40. It is nice and angled and it's thin too. So I thought this is gonna be perfect um, to paint because see how it's thin and tapered this is? I love brushes like that. So, hi Brenda, I see that you're on. Let me know um, when you're coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and share myself onto my page. So I'm actually doing this live straight to uh, DIY Paint and on my YouTube channel, so welcome to everybody. I'm gonna share this to my Lisa Boone Designs uh, page so that everybody could follow along. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So here's what I did. So I did a lot of prep. I don't usually do a lot of prep. I usually do things on the go, but um, I wanted to try something different and unique, so I prepped. And plus, because of the mold, I really need them to get crusted over. So I cut some decoupage paper. This is Sepia Blossoms. I absolutely love this paper. I've used it on a couple of different projects. And all I did was I took the big sheet of 20 by 30 paper, or actually now it's 21 by 21 by 29, 31 maybe? I think that's what it is. So I just used my nails and I cut it roughly. On the inside, I actually messed up. And I'll show that to you here in a second. So I wanna go ahead and get some paint on. Hi, Diana, good morning, good morning. All right, so here's what we've got going on. I'm gonna get on my page too so I, I don't miss any comments because I am broadcasting on um, a couple of different pages. Um, so I just wanna make sure I don't miss anything. All right, so I am gonna be using this new brush like I talked about. It's FA40. I love it already. I know I'm gonna love it because I love, this is a beautiful box. I know, Brenda, it is a beautiful box. Let me show it to you, I didn't even show it to you. Oh, I'm giving away what I'm gonna do on the inside, but it, see, it, it opens up here. So I wanna make sure I get the top right. I just realized that. I had it facing the other way. So once I paint it, oh, I should've, I should always wet your brush, always wet your brush. Your brushes like to be wet before the paint. It, it helps to spread the paint. DIY yeah, paint is so thick. Um, one of the reasons why I love it because you can water it down 10 to one. Do you guys see my reel? I, the eight ounce challenge. That was so much fun. So I think a lot of people thought with the eight ounce challenge that you had to use just one sample jar of DIY paint, but you just had to use eight ounces. And I am not one that likes to paint with one color. If you follow me, you know I like blended, chippy, layered looks. I like distressed a little bit. And um, I like colorful, I like painting with the colors, I like blending. So I weighed out all of my paint. And I, oh, I didn't announce it officially, I can't watch, loved that picture. Oh, you can't watch because you love the picture? No, don't do that. Don't do that to me, Brenda. You're my friend. You can't do that to me. Um, I know that it was pretty, but we're going to change it up. 
and I hope that it'll turn out nice. We'll see. So, um, anyway, I weighed out my paint and I only used less than five ounces of paint. Yeah, thank you, Diana, but I only used, so I still have paint left over and technically I probably should have used it on this piece, but at this point, because what I did was everything that I had left over, I went ahead and I put it all together. I combined all of the paint, so it there's there's a weird shade of green. I'm probably going to use it for some, you know, like first coat stuff. We'll see how that goes. We'll see. I'm going to go ahead and paint this. So I'm going to be distressing this. I want some of the gold to come through. It'll be gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. You, you know the deal. Come on. You know the deal. You know how it goes. Um, it's always going to look good. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, and if not, it's just paint, right? So I can paint over it. Now I am going to add molds to this, so we will see. I can't see the other side, so I'm not going to worry about the other side right now. So I'm not using the typical DIY paint. I'm actually using the DIY lab paint. Um, it was some paint that we had gotten, um, some oops paint. Um, it didn't come out exactly like it should, and so we had gotten a whole bunch of that. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this with the a dryer. I didn't bring my actual heat gun, so this takes a little bit longer. So let's see what we can do. Um, but this is very similar to something like, I don't think vintage linen, maybe beadboard, white swan, somewhere in there. So any white. I like painting things white, especially when I have white decoupage paper. So we're going to be using this piece of paper. Um, I want it to be vibrant. I want it to not be muted and so that's why I chose a white paint so it dries really quickly um, so back to the DIY paint challenge that was super super fun I created two different reels using um, that hutch and then I painted a mirror so I haven't put that reel together yet I actually put it in my bathroom uh, just so that I can, if I need to look at myself really quick, if um, I've done some damage to myself painting and I have customers coming in, I want to be able to look at myself, make sure that a lot of times I don't realize I have paint on my clothes or if I'm doing ATC cards or paper crafting, I'll have like paper residue all over my clothes stuck to myself and I'm like, oh my goodness, because I'm doing it here on my desk which I will be doing some lives here today. Um, I'm, I'm trying to focus. I'm going to hit it with one more coat. I'm trying to focus on some ATCs this week and doing some different lives. So last night, for the first time, just kind of impromptu, I just made myself kind of do it. I hadn't done it before. I've never done a TikTok live. I've done, I have lots of different reels, but I've never done a TikTok live. And so I'm going to spritz this. I went ahead and... Um, I was running late. I had some things to do and I had somebody walk in, a client, bring, drop off some furniture. But um, I went ahead. I just, I, I was like, I've got to do it because it's something I've been wanting to do because I want to talk about the subscription boxes that we have. Um, so I went ahead and I did a lot. Plus, I've been wanting to do it for furniture too. I just when, I, when I, I'm using Switcher Studio right now, and it lets me broadcast live on DIY Paint and or Facebook, two, two, two places. I usually do DIY Paint and Lisa Boone Designs on Facebook, but I haven't been able to do my YouTube videos like I like, and so I'm streaming on YouTube, but it doesn't let you stream on Instagram and on TikTok, so I'm gonna have to do extra lives. So I'm trying to maximize my time, I'm trying to get all of this done, and so I did it, and it was really good. I had 438 people watching, and um, a few, few people went ahead and started following me on TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, I would love it if you would follow me. It's, everything I have is Lisa Boone Designs. You can find me 
on all the things. So today, at some point, I am going to go on Instagram and I'm going to create a master board for the ATC cards. If you don't know anything about the ATC cards, uh, l ask me and let me know. But I'm going to show you the ones that I created yesterday on TikTok. Since this is dry, I'll just go ahead and put these. And this was like quick so quick so I did these and I, I like it when it has that raggedy edge and um, I, I think I'm gonna use this napkin today in a really different way I've never done this before and I just got this idea and I thought I I just absolutely have to try it I don't know if it's gonna work I don't know but I'm gonna try it all right so I'm gonna use liquid patina I have like a small amount so I went ahead and I added a little bit of water. Did you know that you could do that? You could water down your liquid patina. Um, I'm going to wet my brush. This brush is, um, I'm not doing a good job of cleaning it. It's getting a little bit crusty, but it's still in good condition. So I think I'm gonna take it home and soak it in some fabric softener. It really does help because that's why I have a designated brush just for top coat. Hey, Dina. Um, because your brushes, especially these synthetic brushes, oh, any brush really, um, it gets, they get stuck. So, um, de designs by Dina. She is going to, she's actually not too far from me, which is so awesome. I can't wait to meet her. We are going to, um, be doing a marathon this coming Saturday for our ATC subscription boxes. The sad part is that I'm I am not gonna be here. I'm gonna I'm gonna spritz my paper a little bit. Just it helps to get it a little bit stretched. So see, I just misted it. And usually I don't do it this way. I usually like to position my paper first and hold it, but because I was talking, um, I did it differently. There's no right or wrong way. It's just, I just usually like to position it so I know exactly where it's going. And then I apply my patina. So I'm just taking a grocery store bag Usually I have saran wrap, but I don't have any here. So I was scrambling trying to find something to smooth out my paper. So what do you do with the ATCs? That's a great question. We trade them. We gift them. Um, I actually have started, I have a whole bunch here on my desk. I can show you different ones. Um, anyone that places an order on my website, um, which is Lisa Boone Designs, and you can purchase any of the products I'm using today on my website, except for one. I don't... I'm not a retailer yet for that line. So, all right. Brenda, tell me that's not pretty. Tell me. I know I can't wait to meet you and your husband, Dina. We're so close and yet so far because, like, I never go that way. So, I, I don't mind to travel. I can go that way. I have gone there for auctions for furniture. All right. So see how nice and smooth. I actually don't mind if I get a few wrinkles or not, but the ATC cards, while this is setting up a little bit, I'll just show you. So I usually put mine in little, little um, pockets and I send them out to everyone who places an order. And in our private group that we're gonna have, if you, if you purchase a subscription box, there's gonna be a private community and we will be providing avenues for trading but this is a feather that I found in my backyard we have chickens and I'm not sure do you hear that bass somebody is driving a <laughs> major bass um I found that on my yard so I'm not sure if it's from one of our little chickens or a bird but I added a little bird there and I mean sometimes I make them really simple there's a little dangle on this one wait can you see it wait I need to do it this way it's backwards there we go this is, this is decoupage paper that my friend um, Melanie does. It's called Chris, Christian Craft Paper. I love her business. I've talked about it before. She had another one that, um, it was John 316. This is one that I did from the Little Caesars uh, pizza, the napkin. I fussy cut it. I keep moving it the wrong way because it's backwards. Um, that was so much fun. 
like sometimes I do them grungy sometimes that was like really modern this is actually one I made with a tag so you could actually write a little note I thought that was cute um and then I here's another one I'll show you just a couple so all of mine have on the back um, information and so you trade them and you gift them they're just little mixed media pieces and they're so much fun um, sometimes I do little elements like this like where it's 3d I think the other one had like a little button as well the bird one um, and so they may have like sentiments on their washi tape decoupage papers just different different things and, and you can do whatever you want with them but they're so much fun they're so much fun to share with all right, so I'm going to, this is the decoupage queen paper. That was my little um, surprise that I was gonna do. I'm gonna clean up this edge because this was getting goopy right there. All right, so what I want to do um, is I want to paint this. So this is just, can you see that? It's just paper, I just got paint on me. It's just paper. So you can paint paper with DIY paint, um, if you didn't know. So that's what we're gonna do. You can paint cardboard, you can paint paper, plastic, uh, glass. I have done chalkboards with DIY paint, straight up on a thrifted, usually thrifted, like frame. I probably should take my paper out so I don't drip. So I'm, I do wanna show some of the gold. Like I said, I will distress back. And DIY paint is so easy to distress because there's no latex, there's no plastic, there's no acrylic. This is a safe paint, great for the environment and super easy to use. I'm just trying to get all in there. I don't wanna really wet this because this is paper. So I'm just, I could, I could have maybe wet my brush a little bit. Let me wet my brush because it's struggling. I'm struggling because of the angle and then also it's hot in here and it's drying fast. And because it's on paper, it will dry fast too. Yeah, I learned, I never would have thought to paint paper or anything like that but Carmen from Carmen's Curiosity Shop my friend who I love so much she does a lot of paper crafting and I learned so much from her and she had me paint a file folder one time we did a live together a couple of years ago for Christ and crafting and I was like what um, I had stenciled a little bit but I had never really painted like when you know doing junk journals and stuff and that was so much fun. I was like, who knew? Like DIY paint literally will go on anything and everything. I just love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this inside as well. This angled brush is really awesome. And because it's tapered, like I just got paint everywhere just because I wasn't paying attention. But if I was doing this on my own, I would be doing this a lot more carefully. And because I do not like to tape. Who is with me? Raise your hand and tell me if you don't like to tape. I hate taping. I do it if I have to do like stripes, but I really do not like taping. It takes so much time and effort. And with something like this, if I'm not careful, if I'm rushing, it's going to bleed anyway, unless you're using frog tape or something. I'm um, usually a tape, but the trick to using tape when you, especially when you're doing stripes is you put your base coat and then you put your paint over the tape after the paint is dried and then you put your second color and then you take it off at an angle um, before it dries I always do it before it dries because if you wait too long and the paint, especially if you're not using DIY paint, the paint starts curing, you're gonna rip up your paint. And then you're gonna be upset because it's not perfect. But you know my saying, there's nothing perfect but God. God is the only thing that is perfect. <laughs> so I don't usually try to achieve perfect because um, I just can't. All right, so I'm 
kind of not doing a great job of brushing that on because I want some of that gold to show through. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this. Um, let me know if you have any questions about DIY paint, about decoupaging. Um, yes, I do sell the angled brushes. They're on my website. I literally um, didn't even know that they were a thing. I had to get a few brushes. I got a couple. Um, so with the Klingon brushes, they don't have to be in stock. I can drop ship them to you if I don't have them. And I ordered myself, I think I have one for the store. I ordered myself one because I wanted to try it. But then I also ordered a wall brush. I have it back there. It's like this big. And I think that's gonna be great like for maybe putting on a first coat really quick or dry brushing. I think I'm gonna use it more for dry brushing. So this brush is the FA40. And there is an angled brush that is just like the SA50. It's, I think it's called SA, wait, SA50, I think it is. So there's the short handled angled brush and then the long handled. The long handled is FA. F means flat, S is short. A for angled, <laughs> that's the way they name their brushes, it's just easy to remember. So when I was cutting my decoupage paper for the inside, because I wanted something on this inside piece, I could have used a stencil or a stamp, but I kind of wanted to repeat the, the design on the inside. It had, because I've always fold my paper, I cut it on the wrong <laughs> crease. So I, I put my paper down here, and then when I, I creased it, I cut on the wrong line. But what I did was I went back and I cut a piece. So I'm gonna piece it together. It's perfectly okay. It'll be all right. So what I'm gonna do here, because I do want to have it um, right where I want it, I'm going to do it the way that I normally do it. So I'm going to hold down my paper. I'm going to apply my decoupage medium, which is usually always liquid patina i just love this product so much i hate that's a strong word i hate mod podge i never use that stuff i always use liquid patina um I even i've even used it on paper crafting um but for paper crafting if i might use um i might use regular glue i have art glitter glue and then i have some decoupage um, not decoupage, gel medium. So those are my go-to things. So I'm just gonna apply that. I'm gonna flip this backwards and I'm just gonna pull it, see, slightly, ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start at the top because if you start right here, you might get some extra product there and get some creases that you might not want. So I usually back brush. So then I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna hold it tight and I'm gonna go like this. And I'm just gonna work it up. And that's it. It's so simple, so simple. And I still, after all the decoupage tutorials I have done, I still get a lot of questions, which I love. I want you to ask me because I want you to feel successful in doing it. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this here. Get that seam down. And I'm going to try Where is it? There we go. It's hard with the lights. Um, it's fooling. My, it was fooling my eye for a minute. So I'm going to go like this and get this down. I usually don't use my fingers because, especially when I'm hot and sweaty, you can tear your paper. So that's why I'm using this. You can use, I usually use saran wrap, with, especially if I'm at home. I need to get some saran wrap for here. Sometimes I'll use the packaging of something, of decoupage paper or, all right. While this is here, I'm just gonna go ahead and seal it. So I apply 
my liquid patina to decoupage and also to seal down my piece. Whenever you apply your decoupage medium over your decoupage paper, it's going to get wet and it will wrinkle up. But the moment that it dries, it stretches out. No worries. And there's not even that much wrinkling going on on here anyway. There we go, that's better. But the moment it dries, you want to move it around. If you're going to use a dryer, move it around because decoupage does have a sealer in it. I'm going to move it this way just for a minute because my brushes are right there and I do not want to get them singed. So I'm just going to speed that up just for a little bit. All right, let's, let me put this down here. Okay. So I want to, where are my, I'm doing good with my time. I want to apply this paper down here. Isn't this beautiful? I like that it's darker. This is the rice paper. It has a totally different texture. If you've never used rice paper, like I love it. I actually have a whole bunch and I've, I've printed my own, but my printer is not working. So um, I have got to get that fixed. So I'm going to decoupage this, but what I want to do is I want to play, let me see, can you, all right, all right, so this is what I wanna do. I, ma I made these molds. I actually need to do this, I think, I'm not done with the paint but I think I, I need to do this this way so that I can see it, but I'm gonna try to get it so that you can see. Oh yeah, you can see the whole thing. Okay, I just need it to face me. So this is the Roses Mold by I, Iron Orchid Design, of course. See how it's still pliable and I was able to move this around? That's what's so awesome about using the molds. Um, not sure exactly how I want to do this. I want it, I don't want it to be like, I want it like this. Oh, my hair, I don't want to touch my hair. So I've got these little, look at all the details. Do I want this going this way or this way? I think I want it going up. And then I did a little cute one. I love this. So maybe I'll do this one here or here. Maybe I'll do it like that. Okay, I like that. What do you guys think? Okay, so I used Iron Orchid Design clay. It's air dry clay. I wanna show you, this is the mold that I use. It's called Roses. Um, I want to paint these really quickly. Oh, it's okay that it broke. I'm going to paint them right here. You don't want to stretch them. They're getting a crust, which is great. I had a, a, just a little bit too, um, I didn't have enough clay right there. So when I, when I demolded it, it got a little bit torn. It's no big deal. I just put it back together and it doesn't bother me at all because it's gonna look vintage. So I'm gonna paint this. I'm being very careful even though I did them an hour ago. They're still fragile. As you can see, that one broke a little bit. So you don't want to remove the all of that detail. The Molds are so incredible. There's really no mold that's like DIY, I mean, Iron Orchid Design. Um, they're just amazing. They're high quality. All of the products are artisan quality um, and they're just awesome. When you paint your molds, it helps them to not crack, if you didn't know. So I think what I'm gonna do is I might use this one somewhere else. So usually I try to use a really, really soft brush, like, you know, one of my soft artisan brushes, like, I mean, um, artist brushes. 
because I want to get this everywhere. But I'm not worried about total full coverage. You don't even have to paint. You don't have to paint your mold. If you wanted it to be white, you can leave it alone. I like to glue mine when they're wet. I feel like because then I can move them and I can shape them. I'm going to hit that with the air dry, I mean with the air, the gun, the heat gun. So I, I need them to dry for the next step. So I'm going to apply some glue. I'm going to glue them down. And then um, I'm going to put some liquid patina on it, which is my decoupage medium. But that's also our sealer, right? It's not the sealer I'm going to use for furniture. I'm going to use big top or I'm going to use wax. But I want to use dark and decrepit to bring out the details because when, you know, I say this all the time, when everything is one color, you can't see all the details. But at the moment that you add a wash or you add the de uh, de uh, dark and decrepit, the, the patina, and you wipe it back, that becomes so beautiful. I just love it. Okay. I don't want to hit it too, too much yet because I do want it to be a little bit pliable. So, and it's still soft, which is what I want. You know what I need to do? I need to put, I didn't seal this. I should have done that right away. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna apply decoupage medium over this. Now I do have some paper that's extra. I usually wait for everything to dry and then I'll just take a blade and cut it off. All right, let me hit this. Cause I, I need the protection. You're a little late Debbie, no, you're right on time. You're good girl. Um, I need the protection of the liquid patina because when I hit it with the decoupage medium, the liquid patina, which acts as a glaze. It could act as a stain. You could even decoupage with it if you really wanted to. If you had a dark piece. I mean, it's liquid patina with color. We also have the old and gray that um, looks like barn wood. So I'm just drying this. So we decoupaged, we painted this with DIY paint, decoupaged it, and see how it's drying and there's, it's flat, there's no wrinkles. Okay. So now, oops, I'm gonna move this. All right, I like type on quick and thick. That's my go-to. Um, you know what I don't have? I'm just gonna use this lid. Cause I need to get it out here. It's thick and I don't even know if I, I hopefully I have enough. All right, I'm gonna glue this on. I'm gonna position where I want them. So maybe I'm gonna turn that one. And see, this is still pliable, which is awesome. I'm gonna reposition my little things here. I think I want these two kind of, okay. I just broke, that's okay though. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm gonna bend that and I'll squish it in there. And then we'll glue this back together and then we'll do that. And that's perfectly fine. And I'm glad this, this stem broke so I will put this leaf actually I'm gonna do it like that okay so that's my design can you see it no I need to move it okay there we go all right so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work backwards so I'm gonna do this one I'm just gonna use my finger you always want to make sure you get all the edges this way I know exactly where to place everything. And you wanna apply a little bit of pressure, not too much, because again, you have so much detail. I'm just gonna break that, okay. You have so much detail. This one went down here. 
and you don't want it to you don't want to smush it so you want to be gentle but you want to make sure that your piece is adhering whether it's furniture or whatever craft you're working on so I'm just pushing it down now I'm gonna take this piece and I'll put a little bit of glue where it broke off just to bring it back together make sure that it stays there and I'm gonna curve it there we go so you could do the same thing with resin as long as thank you Dina as long as the resin is just been um, come out demolded or you could apply heat uh, to your resin to get a little bit pliable it's just not as pliable as when you first do it so I'm gonna go ahead and add. I loved the quick and thick because it's white but it dries clear so you don't want to have too much that it gushes out you could always use a q-tip to clean it off just adhere it down and this is not hard because you know that was paper in the back is a little piece of cardboard um, there so there's a lot of wiggle room and so that's why I'm having to really push it down even more because it's really not heavy if it was furniture um, it be a little bit easier but you still want to go back you know after a couple of minutes and make sure that it's uh, it's down good so I'm just gonna push see I'm pushing it slightly into here and when you do that that also helps it um, not to crack all right I'll do this little piece because air dry clay is going to crack um, sometimes most of the time because as it's drying it'll crack a little bit but there's a different things that you can do to help it not to crack if you don't want it to so I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue right there on the edge and I'm gonna shove it underneath there see and push it in and have it really attach itself okay and I have glue left over not bad all right so again, I'm always gonna look at my sides. So what can you do if it lifts up? You can use air dry clay and there's different tools. I have them, I need to bring them to the store. They're at home and you can kind of carve and push once this is dry, like the next day. The other thing that you can do is once this is dry, the next day you could, if it bothered you, if it was lifting up and you wanted it to be seamless and you wanted to touch up any cracks, you could use um, Alex fast dry caulking it's in a tube and it just like you would caulk your um, house your molding you could caulk it and then you could paint over it I seldom do that sometimes I you know I have done it but it, I don't mind the cracking but look at all of the details and look at how I want you to see how thick can you see how thick see there you go I mean these molds are incredible I have tons of different styles, all the Iron Orca design stuff. I mean, some stuff I'm out of stock. I have to get more, um, but there's a lot to choose from. Okay, so now the next step, it's 1146. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit this with my decoupage medium. I'm, and I want to make sure that I do, I probably should have used maybe a smaller brush. All right, let me change brushes real quick. I'm gonna wrap this in here, this wet wipe, so that I can, is this a good one? Um, salvage my brush, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna, I want this everywhere. So I'm gonna do the sides, and it doesn't matter that it's gloppy right there, I'll smooth that out. Um, I want to seal this really, really well for the next step. Because the next step is where it's going to come together and it's going to look so good. So if you were at home and you were working on this project or something similar, 
you know, it's probably best to wait a few hours the next day. Yeah, come and shop. Um, so during the week, most of the, during my, my, except well, during the work week, except for Wednesdays, I'm here at Mad City Carpet Barn. This is where um, I have some of my furniture, have a lot of home decor in the showroom. And in the very back, I paint custom furniture or I paint for myself that I'm gonna sell. Um, sometimes I paint here up front, depending. <laughs> right now, I've been painting more up front than in the back just because um, I have to make, I have to rearrange my back. There's just, um, I've got some extra shelves I've gotta reorganize and I've got lots of overstock in the back from the front of the store. And then on Wednesdays, I'm at Now and Then, which is where I sell all of my retail products. So all of these products are at Now and Then, and I'm there every Wednesday. I open the store. I've been there for four years, and I do all of the social media stuff for them, and they kind of consider me one of their own, and I love it there. It's an antique store, and it's, it's absolutely amazing. So I actually am in both stores, which is crazy hectic sometimes. But, um, we, you know, I'm also by appointment. So whenever you are in the area, Dina, you just tell me and I will meet you. Because I don't want to not, not get the chance to meet you in person. So Dina will be, like I was talking about earlier, she's going to be in that marathon with us on Saturday. Now Saturday, I actually won't be live um, it's my daughter's birthday. If you follow me, you know Ari. She used to help me with all of my lives. So a lot of my friends know who she is. She's actually turning 18 on Saturday. She's the baby. Um, and then my husband's birthday is actually Thursday. So I'm whisking them away. We're going to um, Little Rock, Arkansas. So I'm going to actually film my unboxing um, and create some ATC cards. And then I'm going to upload it at my, on my time slot. That was the only way we could do it because we had to do it the 19th and we were trying to figure it all out. That's okay. Um, it'll work out. But um, we have a lot of amazing artists that are going to be on that marathon. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to do this this way. Maybe you can see it better. Okay, there we go. All right, I just want this to dry. If you hit the heat too much on decoupage paper, Ari will be 18, Brenda. I know. It's like, wow. So, um, I want this to dry because I'm going to do the next step. But I don't want my paper to pull up. Because how many of you know that if you use a heat gun on stickers, you can remove your stickers. So if you're out thrifting or if you bought something and you don't want to see that sticker on it, you use a heat gun and it pulls it right up. Sometimes you have to use a little spatula or something like that. Um, but yeah, so you know what? Let me hit this side very quickly. Yeah, she's gonna be 18. She's on the wait list for a beauty school that in town that she's she's been wanting to do beauty school for years. And then she was toying if she wanted to not be in Madisonville or go somewhere else. But when we uh, looked at the other company that she was going to go to, it was in Clarksville, Tennessee, which is 45 minutes from here. Um, not only was it $10,000 uh, higher, um, it was the same exact curriculum. And when we went and toured, I got finally, after months, got her to tour the local one and... They, the lady said they start off with prayer. I was like, you won me over. And they're not government funded. Uh, two wins. So they can do whatever they want. And that's why their prices are lower. I'm like, hello. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's exactly what we needed to hear. Or I needed to hear. And then she was like, okay. So um, she's been working really hard. I'm a firm believer that she needs to work hard. I'm teaching her a good work ethic, and she's, pay I've paid a little bit, but she's paying all of it um, because, you know, you, you appreciate it more. And they're so impressed with her. The teachers are so impressed with her that they tell people they can pay it off while they're on the wait list, but nobody takes advantage of that.
but she has. Okay, so this is what I wanted to do that was a little bit different. I've never done this before. I might hate it, I don't know, but I. this is the napkin that I used for my ATC cards that I created. See, and then I, you know, it looks different because I applied piano roll paper first. I have tons of piano roll paper if you're interested on my website. I did that to age it. And so see how what whatever you put your decoupage paper on is going to make an impact on your decoupage paper. So see how this is a lot more vibrant, but this is a lot darker and it's because it's on brown paper. Um, this one also, this one I did on white paper. I actually took the tissue paper, you know, from the actual tissue, one of the plies, I just ripped it, and I applied. So it's the same concept. You can do this on furniture and on, you know, like I could have done it on the box, but you see the difference? So this one is lighter because I applied white tissue paper over the brown. This one I put the napkin directly onto the brown. Just to show you why we always talk about it matters what you decoupage with. So I probably should have done this first, honestly. I, I want to apply this napkin to the flower. I've never done that before. What do you guys think? It's crazy, right? It's cray cray. I need a bigger piece. Usually I rip my napkins methodically with a water pen, <laughs> but I want to, I just want this pattern. And then I might add some, I should have done this already. I really should have. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go for it. You don't know unless you do it. So this is what I love about napkins. Um, I'm going to rip that off. You can actually put your decoupage medium over your napkin as long as you have a good bit amount on your brush. And the reason that you can do that is because it's so paper thin, you've removed all of the plies and... And maybe I should have done it on the smaller one. I don't know. It's too late now, we're going for it. But you can apply it because it's so thin and it will go right into every crevice and you can curve it and you can, it just will bleed, ble bleed and blend. I was combining those words together. I'm just going to rip some of this off. I just wanted some pattern. I just wanted to try it and see if I would like it. All right, I'm gonna use the brush to rip off the excess. All right. I know you guys think I'm crazy. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna pick that up. Yes, you can do it on napkins. You can't do it on decoupage paper. I've showed it a lot. You may have missed me doing it. Um, whenever I use napkins, just depending on what I'm wanting to do, I usually will decoupage it like this and just apply it where, wherever I want it. Um, you use less product. Um, sometimes you get more wrinkles that way, but I, you know, I don't care if I get wrinkles. It doesn't bother me because in real life, I'm aging. I'm going to have wrinkles, you know, it's okay. All right. I'm going to put a little bit of the stuff that I pulled up on this one. Like that doesn't bother me. I have gray hair. I, I can uh, go ahead and get my hair done or not get my hair done. Like it doesn't bother me. I do like doing things to my hair just because it's kind of cool sometimes. 
but like right now I'm overdue and I've got a lot of gray right here especially in the middle but that's okay like I'm not young anymore so that's why I've never been bothered by it all right I think this is gonna be pretty cool all right I'm gonna lift up this paper I'm trying to get it there we go Okay, I'm gonna move this. Let me hit this with the heat gun. Where, where's, where's my time? I'm at 11.50, 11.58. I will finish this on my page. So if you're watching on the DIY paint page, um, join me on Lisa Boone Designs and I will finish this up because I really wanted to work on this. And I still have some decoupaging to do. I will jump off of here in two minutes and then give me like three minutes. I call those wisdom highlights, amen. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's awesome. All right, so what? this is what I'm gonna do. So now you're stuck. If you wanna see if this is a hot mess or not, you're gonna have to come on my page. <laughs> And join me uh, to see what happens so I'm in just a few minutes I will come back on and we're going to work on this some more and finish it up and then on the inside I will be using this decoupage queen decoupage paper and I'm gonna apply this down and and then I'm going to show how I see I don't like straight edges I'm going to paint that in and then we will seal the whole thing, distress it some, because I definitely want some of the gold to come through. I may even add some more gold with golden rule, or um, I'm definitely going to also put some decoupage, um, not decoupage, but dark and decrepit. So this is what I use to stain wood. So it gives you a walnut stain, and this is also what I use like for grunging up or adding the patina. You could also use dark wax, black wax, um, anything that you like you could use this a, a wash like I said um, just to bring out the details so that's what we're gonna do here all right so join me in a few minutes on my page Lisa Boone designs I hope you guys have an incredibly blessed day thank you so much for watching um, and thank you for your comments and joining me I hope you'll see you here in a few minutes all right ciao